January 3rd, 2017. I have here a paper. It was like 138 pages, but I'm just going to read over the abstract and a few sentences in the introduction. Just to give you an idea of how lost these people really are. This is 2016, and they're still accepting stuff that's been outdated for the past five years now in prestigious journals. It says here, the Hawaii Infrared Parallax Program for young, ultra-cool field dwarfs, meaning brown dwarfs. We present a large, uniform analysis of young, 10 to 150 million year old ultra-cool dwarfs based on a new high-precision infrared parallaxes for 68 objects. We find that low gravity, late M and L dwarfs form a continuous sequence in IR color magnitude diagrams, separate from the field population and from current theoretical models. These objects also appear distinct from young, substellar, brown dwarf, and exoplanet companions, suggesting the two populations may have a different range of physical properties. A few things here. 10 to 150 million years old. That's bogus. There's no such thing as an ultra-cool brown dwarf between 10 to 150 million years old. An ultra-cool brown dwarf is a billion years old, easily. Something like Jupiter. When stars are really young, 10 to 150 million years, they're hot. 25,000 Kelvin to 5,000 Kelvin, about a good range for young stars is really, really hot. That way there's no contradiction inside of establishment astronomy. But they don't want to fix it. They would rather keep hot stars the same age as really old, cool, ultra-cool brown dwarf stars, which is weird, to say the least. When they say young substellar, they, they say brown dwarf or exoplanet, but what is more correct, since brown dwarfs and exoplanets are very old, is that they are less massive than younger stars. They don't say this in this, in this abstract or in the paper anywhere. But their models are based on mass. Big objects are stars, small objects are brown dwarfs and planets. And the key words here to pay attention to how these people talk about these matters is that they use things like spectral type and young and old. And in the abstract, they say, uh, overall low gravity objects have the most uniform photometric behavior, while intermediate gravity objects are more diverse, yada, yada, yada. They don't even want to say mass anymore. They're completely avoiding the fact that their models are based on the mass of the object. They don't want to mention the elephant in the room, that stars lose mass as they cool and evolve. But they don't want to say that. They want to say low gravity, intermediate gravity, and high gravity. Because it's it's uh, it's the mass loss principle in stellar metamorphosis. As stars cool in age, they lose mass due to solar winds, solar flaring, uh, photo evaporation, and evaporation, evaporation in general. But it's, it's not mentioned here. Which leads me to think that, you know, they're finally starting to really get it. That their models are all bogus. But anyways, so... Uh, that's basically it here. I'll link this paper to the bottom. I just find it really strange how... They're given grand opportunity to correct themselves with all the all these new discoveries. They're given... All these billion dollar telescopes, they're given all these grants, they're given the positions in the universities and all these awards, and they still can't figure out the very basics of astronomy. What does that really tell you about where they're headed? What does that say about their sciences? And most importantly, what does it say about their leadership? All right, y'all. I like to do a little night talk here. Uh, I'll go ahead and link this to the bottom. Later.